Hi everyone, my name is Kuvina, and welcome to Explaining Every Sorting Algorithm Part 2. In Part 1, we covered all of these that you see on screen right now, and in this video, we'll cover these ones. The remaining ones, I've decided to move into a third episode. It's highly recommended that you watch Part 1 first, because many concepts and definitions are reused for these algorithms. Just like last time, this video contains flashing lights. Also, check the description for corrections or clarifications. With that out of the way, let's get into more sorting algorithms. Cycle sort uses as few right operations as possible by putting each piece exactly where it needs to go. To get a piece's destination, you just count how many other pieces are smaller than it. But before putting a piece in place, you have to save the value that's already there, and then repeat the process with that one. Eventually, you'll get back to where you started, completing a cycle. To get a chance at every cycle, you repeat this for every piece, even though most of them will already be in the right spot. You do this counting operation once or twice per piece, so cycle sort is n squared. There's a minor optimization of not checking the sorted section to the left, but it's still n squared. Patient sort is a very unique algorithm. It's based on the card game, also known as solitaire, so you can think of the pieces as cards in a stack. The first card starts a new pile, and then for each subsequent card, you add it to the leftmost pile whose top card is greater than it, starting a new pile if there aren't any like that. These piles will be sorted, so you just repeatedly take the smallest of the top cards to do a multi-way merge operation. The average number of piles is 2 square root n, so you might think finding a card's destination pile is O of square root n, but during this step, the top cards are actually in order, so you can use binary search to narrow it down in O of log n. As for the multi-way merge, you can keep track of the top card's values with a priority queue, which is just a structure that lets you extract them in and insert new pieces in O of log n. So both steps are O of log n per piece, making patient sort n log n in total. Normally, you would store these values with O of n extra memory, but that makes a really boring visualization, so I made this version that used the original list to show the piles. Exchange sort is a lot like selection sort, but with more exchanges. Usually, to find the smallest, you keep track of a variable that tells you the position of the smallest one so far. This starts at the beginning, but if any piece is smaller, that one takes its place as the new smallest, and you only move it after this step. With exchange sort, any piece smaller than the current smallest literally takes its place at the start of the list. This automatically puts the smallest at the beginning, so then just like selection sort, you move on and find the second smallest. If you go through the unsorted section in order, then you get this weird backward spike, so looking through in reverse order actually saves a lot of write operations. But either way, it's still n squared, and also worse than selection sort. Odd even sort is a lot like bubble sort, but instead of looking at every adjacent pair, you look at every other adjacent pair, swapping them if the left one is bigger than the right one. You just have to alternate every round between odd even pairs and even odd pairs. I found odd even sort to be slightly faster than bubble sort, but slower than shaker sort. Since it only swaps adjacent pieces, it's n squared. Also, if you're interested, I actually showed off a lot of these algorithms on Twitter, so go follow me on there at kuvina underscore four if you want to get a preview of videos before they come out. Circle sort is weird. The name comes from concentric circles. Basically, you compare pairs that are diametrically opposed and swap them if the left one is bigger than the right one. When you're done, the pieces aren't really partitioned, but the left side will on average be smaller than the right side. So you can do the same thing on each sublist and keep going recursively. The thing is, this doesn't actually sort the list, so you have to keep doing rounds until it is sorted, which you'll know if you haven't made any swaps that round. This works as long as n is a power of 2. If not, you could just take the next power of 2 and do those comparisons minus the out-of-range ones. Each round has log base 2 of n layers, and the average number of rounds is also an O of log n, so circle sort in total is O of n log n squared. This is worse than n log n, but it's technically better than n to the 1.2 from shell sort. But circle sort really reminds me that asymptotic notation isn't everything, because the input size where it becomes faster than shell sort is well into the millions. Merge insertion sort is a weird algorithm that tries to use as few read operations as possible. You start by comparing pairs from different halves and moving the bigger piece to the right, then sort the right half recursively. At the same time, you have to keep track of which pieces were paired, 
which I've done by moving the pieces in the left half as well in the same way. Now you insert each piece from the left sublist into the right one with binary insertion. This is made easier because you know each piece is less than the one it was paired with, along with those to the right of it. So the first one must go here, the second one only has these possible locations, the third one has these ones, and so on. Binary insertion is most efficient when the number of possible destinations is a power of 2. Merge Insertion Sort makes use of this by inserting them in a very particular order. It's a bit complicated, but it sorts any list of size n with approximately n log base 2 of n minus 1.415n read operations. Tournament Sort puts all the pieces into a single elimination tournament where they compete to see which one is the smallest. Constructing the bracket is O of n, since there are n pieces and n minus 1 matches. But each piece only does log base 2 of n rounds, so extracting the min is O of log n time. You just remove the winner and redo the matches that included it. Repeat until you get a sorted list. In heap sort, we could use the original list in a clever way to store the max heap. This is called an implicit data structure and requires no extra space complexity. But you can't do that with tournament sort, so even though it is n log n, it uses O of n space complexity. Also, visualizing the original list is quite boring. Tree sort builds a list into something called a binary search tree. Each node has up to two children, which are the roots of subtrees. Every value in the left subtree must be less than or equal to the parent node, which must be less than every value in the right subtree. Inserting a value into a binary search tree is easy. First, compare it to the root. If it's bigger, move right, and if not, move left. Then keep repeating until you find an open space. The time complexity of inserting is just the height of the tree. On average, that's an O of log n, but in the worst case, it can actually be an O of n. But if you use a self-balancing tree, like a red flag tree, then it will always be an O of log n. To build the tree, you just insert the pieces one by one, which makes the step n log n. To turn the tree into a sorted list, you just do something called in-order traversal, where you recursively take the left subtree, then the root, then the right subtree. Categorizing pieces based on the first one as a pivot is what quicksort does. Treesort uses a lot more space complexity, but it can be stable, and it can avoid quicksort's worst case with a self-balancing tree. Gnome sort is supposed to be the simplest sorting algorithm there is. It's based on how a gnome would sort flower pots. You repeatedly compare adjacent pairs, and there are two conditions. If the left one is less than or equal to the right one, you move one space to the right. Otherwise, you swap them and move one space to the left. There are also two boundary conditions. If there's no piece on the left, you just move right, and if there's no piece on the right, you're done. Upon implementing this, you'll notice that it's basically just insertion sort, but with unnecessary operations. Library sort is an improvement on insertion sort based on how you would sort books on a bookshelf. The main issue with insertion sort is that shifting the pieces over takes a long time, but if you use an auxiliary array with gaps, you won't have to shift pieces over very much. You can use any gap size g, and it will require an auxiliary array of size n times g plus 1. With library sort, you insert the pieces into this auxiliary array one by one. If the round number is a power of 2, you rebalance by doubling each piece's position, reintroducing gaps. If you combine this with binary search, then inserting each piece is O of log n, meaning the algorithm in total is n log n on average, but it does have a worst case of n squared. Next up is strand sort. It involves finding sorted subsequences, which is actually pretty easy. To find one, you always start by moving the first piece to an auxiliary array called solution list. Then for each subsequent piece, you add it as long as it's greater than or equal to the last one you added. Every round, you find a new sorted subsequence, add it to the solution list, and then merge with whatever's already there. When you're done, just copy it onto the original list. Finding sorted subsequences and merging are both O of n on average, and you do each of these once per subsequence. The subsequences are actually the same ones from patient sort, so there are two square n of them on average. That means strand sort is actually O of n to the three halves on average. Just like patient sort, I made this version just to show what the subsequences actually look like. Topological sorting refers to algorithms that sort pieces not by value, but instead based on edges in a directed graph network. 
The only rule is that for any two vertices, A and B, if there is a directed edge from A to B, then A must come before B in the sorted list. As long as there are no cycles, there will always be some valid order. In fact, sometimes you can have multiple valid orders, and the algorithm only needs to find one of these. One way to do this is called Kahn's algorithm. For each vertex, count the number of edges that point to it. This is called the in-degree. You start by taking all the vertices with in-degree 0 into the ordered list. Then you effectively remove them from the graph by decreasing the in-degree of anything they pointed to. Now you just keep repeating this step. If you ever get a case where there are still vertices but none with in-degree 0, it means there is a cycle and no topological order exists. But if there aren't any cycles, it's guaranteed to work. A sorting network is a special type of sorting algorithm that knows in advance every comparison that it will make. You can visualize it with the pieces moving along horizontal lines. The comparisons are vertical lines. You go through left to right, and when you encounter a line between two pieces, you compare them. If the first one is bigger than the second one, you swap them. Otherwise, do nothing. You can also have arrows pointing upwards, in which case you swap them if the first one is smaller. Also, if you encounter collinear comparisons, you can use parallel processors to do them simultaneously, or you could just do them one at a time top down, which is what I've done with the visualizations. You can actually do this as long as there's no overlap in the pieces. This comparison technique is the same thing used by bubble sort, and we can make a sorting network based on it, although it doesn't have the ability to stop early if you get through a round with no comparisons. We can actually make sorting networks based on a lot of algorithms, including odd even, selection, and insertion. You might notice that the sorting networks for insertion and bubble are mirror images. In fact, if you just shift the timings a bit, then both of them become the same thing. You can turn this into a sorting algorithm, which I've decided to call BIISORT, for bubble and insertion are identical. All of these so far use the same number of comparisons n times n minus 1 over 2, which is an O of n squared. But that's not optimal. For example, they would use 6 comparisons for n equals 4, but we actually only need 5. The optimal number of comparisons for a sorting network is unknown past n equals 12, but we do have algorithms better than n squared. One of these is Batonic sort. It only uses n times log base 2 of n times log base 2 of n plus 1 over 4 comparisons, which is in O of n log n squared. It can be a bit confusing just looking at all the lines, so it helps to separate them into colorful boxes. Each white box is equivalent to a combined halves operation from merge sort, so as long as each half is sorted, the white box will sort its input. So we start by sorting each pair, then combine those into groups of 4, then into groups of 8, and so on. Each white box consists of a blue box and then a bunch of pink boxes, whose sizes get repeatedly cut in half. Blue boxes swap pieces that are diametrically opposed, like circle sort. Pink boxes swap pieces in the same place, but different halves. With this method, we can easily create a network if the list size is a power of 2. If not, we can take the network for the next power of 2 and simply ignore any comparisons outside of the list. Now to implement this network as an algorithm, you might be tempted to use recursion, but that's not the sorting network way, since it does the boxes in weird order. The main advantage of sorting networks is that you can do comparisons simultaneously with parallel processors. If we fully take advantage of this, we can always do n over 2 comparisons at a time. So although the number of comparisons is in O of n log n squared, you can use parallel processors to make the time complexity simply O of log n squared. But without parallel processors, the time complexity is the same as the number of comparisons. Platonic sort is kind of like a really weird version of merge sort, and although the time complexity is worse, it only has space complexity of 1, as long as you don't use recursion. The odd-even network, which goes by a lot of names, is very similar to Batonic sort. Basically, for each white box, you replace the blue box with a pink box, and for the remaining pink boxes, you remove one per column for each white box and center them. Since it removes some boxes, the odd-even network ends up being slightly faster than Batonic sort, but it still has the same time complexity. There's also the pairwise sorting network which is a modified version of the odd-even network. Basically, you take the first box from each white box and move all of these to the beginning. For the remaining columns, you have to do them in a very particular order. 
But even this isn't enough. Since the pieces are now in completely different places, you have to modify the boxes in a really complicated way. I coded it by noticing patterns in it, but even I don't really understand it. Its visualization is mesmerizing, but it's not any faster than the regular odd even network. Now it's time for some more joke sorting algorithms, starting with stooge sort. The concept behind it actually makes a bit of sense. With something like merge sort, you have to sort each half recursively and then do a combining step. Stooge sort replaces this combining step with another recursive step. Specifically, it sorts the left two thirds, then the right two thirds, and then the left two thirds again, all recursively. When calculating two thirds, it's important to round up. Also, when the subless size gets down to two, you just compare the two and swap them if the first one's bigger. This is actually the only way pieces are ever moved. Due to the way it uses a recursion, stooge sort has a time complexity of approximately n to the 2.7, and it involves a lot of unnecessary check operations. Slow sort is probably the best joke sorting algorithm. It's amazing just how inefficient it is. In contrast to quick sort, which uses a divide and conquer strategy, slow sort uses a multiply and surrender strategy. Just like merge sort, it starts by recursively sorting each half, but it doesn't just combine them. Instead, it checks the last piece from each sublist. The biggest piece of the list is simply the bigger of the two, so whichever one that is, it places at the end. Now that the biggest piece is at the end, it just sorts the rest of the list recursively. To see just how bad this is, consider n equals 10. The first function call has a linear cascade of smaller function calls, each of which has two half-size function calls, and each of those has its own linear cascade, and so on. The time complexity ends up being O of n to the O of log n, which is non-polynomial time. And to sort a list of size 200 requires over 200 million function calls. Finally, there's quantum boco sort. Under the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, there exists a parallel universe for every possible outcome of a quantum event. So all we have to do is quantumly randomize the list and destroy the universe if it's not sorted. That way, the only surviving universe is the one where it is sorted, and this guarantees O of n time complexity. And that's all the algorithms for today. This video took a ton of work, and since I've just graduated college, I want to focus on my YouTube channel more, so anything you can do to help my channel would be very much appreciated, including liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing. This video was originally going to be longer, but I decided to further split it up into a part 3, which will cover variations and hybrid algorithms. But for now, I'm a bit tired of sorting, so I'm going to do a different project first, and you can follow me on Twitter to keep up with development. Anyway, thank you for watching and for your continued support, and I hope to see you soon. Bye!